in the big bill stack will keep you in the know. In the big bill stack will fix your techie woes, tumble breaking, tumble baking, still we're all together raking, and we'll raise a cup of grog down in the big bill stack. In the big bill stack, come and join our fire crew. In the big bill stack, we will show you what to do. Come we'll hack it till we crack it, and we'll tell the world about it, and forget to tidy up. That's why it's now a bill stack. <laughs> oh dear. Hello and welcome to the Bill Shank 060. We've been in a last minute mad dash to get you all these pretty shiny lights. Lincoln Lights IKEA everywhere. special. Yay. Woo. It is, in fact, there's lots of IKEA stuff in here, isn't there? Yeah. Two Fado bulbs now. Yeah. Um, before we. <laughs> Come on. Yay! Yay. Ooh. <laughs> one more. One more. Like being prepared. And this is nothing like being prepared. Yeah, this is nothing like being prepared. <laughs> So, first we want to, well actually it's totally pitch dark and I've got an Iron Man disco on my chest, so <laughs> let's, let's get some light. <laughs> Bam! Oh, that wow. is bright. Oh, dear. <laughs> so, let's get a few things out of the way first. We've got lovely shiny, I've just ruined your lovely shiny curly bendy arm. Uh, it's alright, I need to use it at Yep, we now have this in more colours. Um, the Hobby Creek arms, which have proved like pretty popular. They are amazing. They're such a good reuse of these like opposable. What are they? Uh, coolant pipes. It's, yeah, the bases are proper though. The bases oh, are just yeah, the right. Bases they are... feel. Oh, yes. Absolutely ridiculous. Yes. Remove for Hobby Creek suction tape. Well, somebody on the chat has pointed out that you are Pride Iron Man. <laughs> 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 it's a little bit camp film. That's how we like it. That's how we roll. Cool. So yep, yeah, so pick those up on the store. Super duper things. I wouldn't have They're been able solid. to build this little thing or do the soldering in this little thing if it wasn't for helping hands, because they make up for the fact that you only have two. One of them's clutching a soldering iron and the other one is looking at the what you're doing on your phone or something. I don't know. Cool. Anyway, we've got shiny, shiny magic toys that yep. Sandy would like to show you today. Oh, we're going to think we're going um, our, well, we're uh, going to have a quick look at unboxing. And, and our Cubetto playset arrived uh, <laughs> earlier this so week. What, what number bill shank did we look at this in? We have, we're totally unprepared. But we we looked at a prototype of Cubetto uh, a month ago now, wasn't it? Yeah, it must be uh, three, four months ago. And it, it was cool. It was really quite impressive, and it was super cute. And it kind of feels like a really premium oh. kind of Finnish wooden toy. So no picture. No picture. No picture. I think we've blown up the camera. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, my YouTube's showing a picture. Oh, sure. yeah. Yeah. You sure? Um, yeah. Some people. Problem is with you. Have you tried opening your eyes? I mean, we did make it suddenly bright, but have you tried opening your <laughs> <it? laughs> Yeah. As yeah, far so as we can say we're, we're, we're live on the air. Yeah. We, we can. Uh, we'll show you the, the Facebook people, people who've got no It's fine on YouTube, apparently. apparently. Okay, right. Cool. Right, mm. so um, yeah, no, so Cubetto is this really lovely, um, I guess, like simple kind of coding kit for kids, um, and it has a little um, wooden robot, um, and it has a kind of control board that um, has little shapes that fit in that do different things. Mm -hmm. um, you lay them down on the board, and you can tell the little robot what to do. Uh, basically, and it's it's in a really beautiful package, Love, is, lovely yeah, package. Incredibly well finished. I think um, Emma said she saw three-year-olds basically playing with this and understanding that they were controlling the robot, so popping blocks yeah. in and experimenting. So yeah, so before yeah. they can talk. Very tactile, yeah. experimental. Yeah, the whole thing's very cute. Yeah. It's so it's ginormous. You open it up and it's, it's got these lovely. Uh, booklets that are kind of they remind me of the I don't know if anyone's seen the in a nutshell YouTube channel um, who do kind of like um, science explanatory oh, videos yeah. with really doing, really lovely animation um, and I don't know if it's the same person or if it's just kind of very much inspired by it but the the artwork in these booklets looks really like that um, That's super cute so they have these lovely lovely instruction booklets um, this is the monster great the control board that's control made board. out of uh, birch plywood really yep. nicely milled so out nice. um, lovely injection molded case really nice some play mats in there as well yep. isn't there yeah you have play mats oh, these are fabric play mats now as well versus the the 
plastic ones yep. we had yeah. that were the, the prototype, yep. so they're really nice. So the idea with this is that you set, the, you set the robot on one of these squares and then program it and then it moves between the different squares. Um, and they have a couple of different mats that have got different themes. Um, I think this is the space map with the space, the space expansion book, which yeah. are like add-ons to the, the base set. Um, and then you've got a little space mat. nice little cloth bag with the... Um, Scrum uh, tiles. Yeah, no. the, the, <laughs> the, the, the token button things that you put on the on the board. And then... The oh, we've got to show them the little cardboard cutout face. <laughs> <laughs> No. Oh. That's where your robot is hiding. <laughs> Just in case you. Yeah. And that's the the robot with again with the cute little face on it. Yeah, we'll definitely have to do a, a little a, a build on this. Take the robot apart and show the GUI in it. <laughs> yep. The expandability. Yeah, it's basically all Arduino when you want to hack with it, isn't it? Yeah. So. Mm. Yeah. Imagine that being quite exciting to add. Cool. Right. So we'll go to, let's go to the main course. Pack away. Uh, Check it to one side. Stop right. packing away neatly. We don't do that. Yeah. One more thing, flotilla. Oh, let's let's show that. Need so we've trail. been working on a, a bit of a um, beautification, I guess you would call it, of our uh, flotilla website. Yeah. Um, and a bit of a reorganisation. So um, Lydia, who is our um, incredible. Um, Head of design. Head of design. Yeah. Uh, artist, illustrator, designer, you name it, um, has been working on this um, revamp for the Flotilla website. So um, let's uh, have a bit of a scrolly scrolly. So let's have a look. Ooh, let me that. They don't see us. Oh, this. dear. So, so yeah. Yeah, so one issue with the Flotilla website at the moment is we don't have a landing page. Um, so you either have to go straight to the cookbook page or straight to the getting started guides um, so we're going to have a proper landing page we're going to have a page that um, explains about what all the different bits are um, so the dock and the uh, um, <laughs> the dock and the different modules um, we're going to have a a lovely index page for the um, the different cookbook recipes and the tutorials um, and we're just going to make it all look a bit a bit more fun, nice really. Nicey, nicey, mm -hmm. shiny, mm -hmm. child friendly. Yeah, well, just anyone who's getting into it and doesn't want to be put off by, yeah, it being a bit dry, yeah. <laughs> a bit technical. <laughs> bit technical. Yeah, it's yeah. quite functional at the moment. Um, has all has all of the information, but needs to look a bit more fun. So that's yeah. that's what Ooh, we're doing. That was good. Um, oh, cute. Yeah, so this is the index page for the cookbook recipes. Um, yeah, looks really nice. Um, it's amazing what you can do when you've got a graphic designer to help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can actually no, spend no a lot on it. Yeah, well, you know, it's all time spent really. True. And yeah, having a clue what you're doing and your brain not being Swiss cheese. Yep. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, that should be coming soon. Cool. Yep. Mm. Right. IKEA. No. IKEA. So what we got is we've uh, we got three things we've made today. Uh, we could have had a fourth, but it was just another lamp, really. So. We have the projector lamp, which seems to be a bit end of life at IKEA now, but you Sp might be able to find it in your Sprider. local store. Sprider. The Sprider. Sprider. Yeah. S P R I D A. Yeah. Yeah. So look for it in the lighting section. Should be able to find it before Should they actually. Be focus it. Get you can have it. a beach ball loading graphic on the palm of your hand. Do the focus thing. Yeah. You can actually this um, this lamp actually takes uh, has like a little thing that slots in that takes uh, slides. So yeah. you can, you can actually. Keep project. This was still compatible with the slides. Yeah, back. you can project really, uh, old fashioned slides. Made a very clean yeah. modification of this. Yeah. If you look at the links below the video, we've got two examples of projects using a matrix and a unicorn hat. We've got a third example here, which we'll take you through. We've got the jar of fireflies. <laughs> yep. Why so the jar of fireflies? Let me explain what this is. I'll um, explain them in a bit. We'll go through them one more right, in okay. detail. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so that's just a little Pi Zero Explore hat based thing. Explore fat. And I've got the Fado lamp. Oh, which we've, we've always had a unicorn hat in, but we've actually now got it with the moats in. Oh, yeah. No, no yeah. big reveal yet. No. Which, which are we going to do first? I'll do this one, because <laughs> I like it. It looks like a little robot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my head. Eva. <laughs> oh, no. Eva. <laughs> Sorry. Right. So, so what, what did we have in here before we pulled it apart? 
It had a it had a very very bright four volt LED that was connected to this black back bit, which is actually a big aluminium heatsink. So it had a, a mighty hot LED, single LED in fact, with a lens in front of it that then shone through the central compartment here to which slide slot to change the colour of the light, and then a lens at the front which focuses the light. So what you get is like a a sort of thing that projects a circle of light that you can change colour and presumably you could put other things in the slot in the yeah, middle. Yeah, you could put old fashioned... Uh, like it passes the uh, saddle. Ghosts and stuff. Saddle? That, that's clear. So, I'm supposed to do a trying experiment now that somebody else did on the YouTubes. Uh -huh. So it's got, it's got see-through bits. So if we shine it against your chest, as our best... We might need it to be so if I just again. put that in there... Oh, you're trying to say... Oh, I've got to get it in hey, the... The lights are all around the outside edge, though. Is, it <laughs> is this no way you... This is not going to work, is it? No. I'm just going to be terminally embarrassed. We need to add a light to the middle. Yeah. So Unicorn hat in the middle. Mm. Yeah, that's just not working even slightly. Yeah. Oh, it looks so cool, though. You can <laughs> see the individual <laughs> elements. But you can do things well, like you have <laughs> stuff like that, and you print on it, and you can use it to block the light. For slides, or you can use laser cut things oh. Oh. Um, to make opaque things. I've got a bucket on my arm! Opaque <laughs> gels, not gels. Gates, I suppose. What do you call them in theatre? Yeah, gels. Yeah, gels. But where you have the actual metal gels. ones, the metal stencils, ones. that's filters. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cool. I think so. you can actually put the old fashioned um, like photograph slides <laughs> in there as well. Uh, yeah. It fits them, I think. I've got a bunch cool. of old slide yeah. viewers that I want to hack with. So, so what have we got inside here, Sam? <laughs> well, we go to the close-up camera, actually. Yeah. That's probably the best way to do it. Scooch, 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 scooch. Hang on. James Mitchell says they're gels. It affirms that they're gels. Uh, gel, we'll gels are the partially yeah. see-through one. Well. But you actually get metal stencils as well. Um, right, so let's uh, take this bit off. So, so, okay. Where are we? So this is what we've got here. We um, bring so a screwdriver to get into this thing, but it's probably unwise to try and take it apart now. Essentially what we've got here is a, a 12 pixel um, Adafruit NeoPixel ring. Um, we 3D printed a little um, holder for the NeoPixel ring that slots into this uh, recess um, that was already there. Um, so this, originally this bit had like a, a an injection molded lens okay. um, and the LED sat at the back and the lens kind of um, channeled the light forward um, so we took that out and the recess that was left we've 3D printed this holder um, <laughs> and oh sorry yeah, not but there's, there's something smart behind there though as well though uh, yeah there's a, a Adafruit Gemma uh, okay. microcontroller um, it's it's, yeah, it all fits into that tiny. back piece, so it's a very. It's basically the size of the centre bit of the new pixel ring. Cool. Um, and that's just sat behind it, um, and it's just three wires um, between the gem and the new pixel ring. So data, ground, power. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then we've uh, Phil has kind of bodged a. <laughs> it's not a bodge. <laughs> it's beautiful. Bodged a Raspberry Pi power supply. Um, so the actual the USB thing at the end wouldn't fit through the hole, no, would it? Just snip yeah, that and this is solid aluminium, and we weren't about to dremel that because it's quite deep. Oh yeah, someone said they're called gobos. Gobos, of course yeah. they are. Yeah. Just like Fraggle Rock. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> which is apparently coming back. Seriously? Mm. Deck clever show Fantastic. as well. Everything. If you ever watched it, there was localized bits in the lighthouse. They had local lighthouse keepers. Yeah. So in Norway, they had a Norwegian dude and a different dog, I think. I love Fraggle Rock. Yeah, very clever globalisation of content. Anyway, <laughs> go goes. So Phil's actually um, connected up the switch that was on this already. Um, so if you press the switch, Woo, then it, killed it dead. turns the power off, press it on again. Let's wait for the microcontroller to boot. Comes okay, back quick. on. Yeah, these have a bootloader on them. But the actual the bell wire and the official power supply plays towards you here, doesn't it? Makes it easier. Yeah, Compared to like hacking an actual USB power Very, supply. very easy to hack bell wire because you just snip the plug off, you carefully snip the two sides of the bell wire apart, and then you strip one, strip the other. 
Mm -hmm. um, your ground on the bell wire is always indicated by white stripes running down it, so it's easy to know which is yeah. which. They're slightly negative symbol, aren't they? Yeah. And yeah. So, so all sorts together. It's got the Very focus bit at the front here, which I'm going to try and pull out. Quite clever, that. Yeah, so it's got this metal bar thing here, which I don't know if you can see. <laughs> you just pulled it out. Yeah, but that sits in a thing, and when you push against that, that's what does the focus ring like that and brings the lens in and out. It's just this big screw thread and it yeah. travels along. I've like broken it now. It's just it all should just screw it straight back in. Yeah. Keep, oh, yeah. keep on screwing. So there. Yeah. And then all the way. Yeah. Got quite a lot of travel. I mean, there's a good two yeah. inches in there. And there's, there's the lens there. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's positively terrifying. Good. <laughs> Beautiful. Yep. Can't see what people are saying. Mm. Then it all just slots slots back together quite nicely. Yeah, but, but very, yeah it's cool. a very neat yeah. and tidy hack because there's most of it hasn't changed. It's just the back bit with the LEDs in has been modified and had new shiny LEDs put in. So yeah, yeah it neat. Still works as originally intended. You can turn it on off. You can still slot sides in. Unfortunately, these LEDs just aren't aren't bright enough. They aren't as insanely bright as the LED that came in it. Um, we can fix they don't, they don't have the same ridiculous amount of, yeah, I mean you can do a, a heck of a, a modification with that slot a unicorn hat in there, yeah. with possibly minimal tooling. So David Glauder who's on the chat, he's done a couple of projects, he did the very nice unicorn hat one. That isn't the unicorn and the hat one. sitting there right on that shelf, let's try and slot it in the side. Yeah. <laughs> <Why> <laughs> the window sill in back. Um, so yeah, let's have a look at the second one, which is um, oh, it's so this, close. this little really firefly yeah. light. Um, so this is basically, let's take it all out. Um, you know what, we can get G to make us one right the header, and then just <laughs> slot. Done. This yeah. is a... Um, destructive. Just put it aside. Take it apart, it should go inside, yeah. Sorry, Sandy. Mm, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is a, a two pound fifty uh, IKEA jar. Um, so they have that and the milk jug, which seems to be from the same glassware. Yeah. So they have the some, some kind of Swedish milk jug, which is yeah. kind of good. Um, a lot of places around here have started doing uh, milkshakes in them, which yeah. I I love. Yeah. Peanut butter and banana milkshakes. In, in that. No, no, in the small <laughs> milk jug. <laughs> not, not in the. In the in oh yeah, I know the milk jug. <laughs> yeah. Um, see those. Anyway, you should tell us what's on this project. Things. Yeah, so so there's the the jar, and then there's the I think you stole the you've destroyed the box. Yep. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, the the LED lights are these um, Sardal lights. Um, so they're fairly cheap and cheerful. Really, so they any, are any cheap LED lights. Will do three pounds for a set of twelve LED fairy lights, if you like. Um, the when you get them, they come with a little battery pack, um, so they're battery powered. They take uh, two AA batteries. Um, you know that looks about the right size for a Pi Zero. It's too small. Uh, I did think about that. We can drill all that though, can't we? <laughs> <laughs> We've I had got Pi Zero cases. See, I had I had thought originally that I could keep the the power switch, um, and that we could actually use that um, to switch the the Pi Zero on and off, but. I just kind of, partly because we didn't, didn't have enough time, partly because it didn't really fit all that well, um, I just kind of abandoned that. So I just snipped the, snipped the two cables off that. Um, here we've got a Pi Zero, and we've got an Explorer Fat, and we've got a Zero Lipo, um, which is our little um, board for powering the, the Pi Zero, or a full-size Pi with a lipo battery cool um or a lithium ion battery yeah um so i've just soldered the zero lipo onto an extended header that's on the explorer fat um, and then stuck the the explorer fat onto the pi zero um the two strings of led lights are soldered onto the motor channels on the explorer fat um the reason i've done that is it makes it really easy to um, PWM, so to fade in and out the, the LEDs with the motor channels. Um, the other benefit of doing it that way is that you can't really connect the 
the wires up the wrong way because if they don't work one way, then you just drive it <laughs> backwards rather than forwards. So um, if you look, um, I was talking to you about this earlier, if you look at BigClive.com, here's the YouTube videos, he looks at some strings of LED lights where you get the ones that flash in alternate patterns, so the odd ones and the even ones, uh, and he looks inside it and the driver board was fairly complicated because it had a H for John. <laughs> and the, the alternate LEDs were reverse biased. So you put uh, you put current through one way, and half the LEDs light up. You put it through the other way. So you they could find up. those kind of LEDs I've, and tap them onto. So it. I've I've actually done that with Explorer Hat. Yep. And then what you do is with the motor channel, you just drive it forwards and backwards. Yeah. Um, and when it's going forwards, then it will drive one half of actually, the LEDs. Yeah. For the same and when it's going backwards, it drives the other. Two half. more strings of LEDs onto just those yeah. motor channels. Could yeah. Be, yeah. And like they four whole strands. The thing is, as well, because uh, if you want them on all the time, all you do is PWM them very quickly. Yeah. Well, the human eye doesn't <laughs> yeah. make the they look yeah. all the same. Yeah. yeah. So the, the, the code that I've done is basically just um, fading up and down one set at the opposite time to the other one. So one mm -hmm. set's coming up when the other one's going down and vice versa. Um, and you get quite a nice kind of um, quite a nice effect from that. Cool. Um, obviously, you could speed it up or slow it down. Or have one set going fast and the other going slow, or you know whatever you want. But um, yeah, throw it in the jar. Throw it in the jar. Fire yeah, stick it in the jar, and you've got a you've got a lovely firefly light <laughs> in a jar. So yep, it's quite cool. Cool. And then the final one. It's the Fado um, globe. A PS de resistance. Mhm. Mm um, can't see. What's so th this is a thirteen oh, pound glass globe. Deal. Can we kill the close up? You certainly yeah, can, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the botch is strong with this one. <laughs> Where do we even begin explaining this? Okay, so it starts out as an LED lamp. Um, <laughs> you put a normal bulb in it, it's got a uh, Edison screw for it. It's got a glass globe that's kind of quite large. Um, and then we rip all that out, keep the plastic bit at the bottom, and we've replaced it with four <laughs> moat sticks. In a oh, vertical arrangement. Me. Blind, blind. <laughs> and what this allows you to do is kind of some simple animation effects. Somebody's done this for kind of um, near pixel strips as well, and it looks pretty cool. So we recreated it with Moat. Yeah. And yeah, it gives you a little bit of rotation. Oh, we'll probably do. Off, no. We'll probably do a version with eight no. of these just to give it more. Leave it. More light and more latitude and rotation. And you've managed to hack it through the original power hole. Yeah, indeed, yeah. So yeah. the original power hole now takes the USB cable, which you can run to your Pi or to your desktop computer or whatever it is you want yeah. to drive this light from. So you can drive this light from anything that you can run a moat from, which is quite a nice, uh, yeah. nice feature. Yeah. You don't have you don't need another wall socket for it, basically. Or you could even stick a Pi Zero inside, inside there it, yeah, and just double the well, cable back and then just have your power going or on. have your cable stay um, inside. Yep. You could obviously. Um, Internet of Things it by having Wi-Fi. We can make this brighter now as well. And then we um, another power supply. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could um, connect it to Wi-Fi and then have it as a kind of notification system. So when you get an email or if someone mentions you in a tweet, you could have it flash or yeah, um, whatever you want really. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So we've um, basically to modify this, we got G to three D printers a. Um, uh, a connector that connects the base onto a bit of metal rod that we just had lying about and then we cut the metal rod down to length mesh the two things together ran all the cables for the moat up the length of the rod which works quite well to keep them together and keep them tidy because this is absolutely the length of the cable I mean you can't there's just no more slack than that that's good it keeps it tidy it keeps it tidy keeps it yep. together Keeps everything sturdy as well, which is nice. And then the the moat sticks are just rubber banded onto the the metal pole in the middle. <laughs> yeah. So it's a, it's very hacky, but it does the trick. I mean, it works. Get them back in the globe. Let's see really it. Can't fault it. Yeah, we need to doing the do. Can we feed it in <coughs> carefully? Um, where's that power supply? We've got. Oh, you want to go for brighter? Isn't yeah. it being used to power the pie that's driving this? Uh, thing? Yeah. <laughs> they need a second one. We should have one like that, shouldn't we? That one goes. There's another one. No, oh, that's uh, that one. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, we can show people later. Yeah. Cool. So, good project oh, there. A few bits, and you end up with something that has four zones or more. Yeah.
Do so it has a nice variation of hue around there. Don't so can see let's the kill light. the light again so we can yeah. see that. So after the build chunk, I think what we'll try and do is we should be able to get like a, a kind of spiral effect going from the bottom, uh, going round and then right up to the top. Like That'd be great for Halloween because it would be like, like a yeah, yeah. crystal ball. Like swirling, yeah. <laughs> yeah let's, let's do that. Yeah. <laughs> and Sandy, of course, will write all of these up into official. <laughs> you can actually quite clearly see now the the lights travelling around the outside of the guy. It's mm. really nice effect, lovely. Yeah, we did originally think maybe maybe eight moat sticks would make it look supremely cool, but it actually works incredibly well with just four. So that means yeah. one one moat kit can get you up and running. Yeah, so the moat kit is 40 quid, which includes controller and four sticks and the cables, including yeah. the USB cable to go to your computer. And that's really good for like PC cases, kind of like shelving, or globes like this. Oh, the Picade is lit up with a moat stick as well. Oh, moment. my word, yes. Just see. The, um, so the other Faddle lamp that we've got, um, I'm pointing to it, but you can't see me pointing to it, but um, <sighs> the one that's up on the IKEA Kallax shelves. Yeah. That's actually a unicorn hat that's driving that I one. I think we should replace that with this one. Yeah, it's just so much cooler. So nice, isn't it? Upgrade. So upgrade. Cool. Yeah. Brilliant. So I think that's all we've got to time to go through this week. We now need to get off and improve Flotilla again and do all the other stuff we're working on because we're now just basically on the ramp up to Christmas and Black Friday. And <laughs> yeah, Friday. everything is chaos. <laughs> It's busy, but it's good to take a break and just spend the day hacking around with pretty blinking lights. You have to go like this, Phil. Yeah. <laughs> David Glader is saying he tested the Blinked and the Pi Zero in the Fado, um, which hopefully yeah, is good enough if you're doing a night light or something, because they're still pretty bright with eight LEDs. Yeah. And then you've got Unicorn Fat, which is four times the LEDs, Unicorn Hat, which is um, twice the LEDs again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then you've got Moat. Which is the same number of LEDs? Uh, 64 again, isn't it? 64. Yeah. Right, it's 16, 16, 16, 16. 64, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Is there any ETA on the Zero LiPo with charging circuitry? No ETA yet. It's no. being worked on. Um, it'll take a bit more time to kind of go through it and make sure it all works really well. Um, it, the problem is always finding the high current charger and then making sure it does things like switching over if we want to do a UPS style. So it's definitely one of those uh, multi, it's, you add one thing and it's kind of four times as hard to get it right. Very yeah. And there are very few kind of high current charger power things there, out there, which is why we've got zero LiPo, because it's a really good high current, you know, sensible thing for the Pi. And a lot of them out there are like only one amp yeah, so we'll let you know. I think at the moment we're just concentrating on getting pan tilt, piecade hat, and automation fat out there. Yeah, which will all be good news. Cool. Yep. Ooh, I think that's that's mm. it, isn't it? Yeah. So. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If a fist comes out of the dark. And like, like, tell your friends about us and stuff like that. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Happy blinking light hacking.